Today we're going to look at five open world survival base building co-op games that you can play on the PC right now. Each of these games is a little bit unique in its own way, so let's dive straight in. For me, Seven Days to Die is a game well worth its money because of all the different things I can do in the game. Being voxel based means that it's not going to be winning any awards for being the best looking game out there, but it's also not the worst. For those that don't know, the general idea is that you are in a world populated by zombies and every seven days a horde of zombies will seek you out and attempt to kill you. To defend yourself, you have weapons ranging from simple bow knives up to and including an RPG, which sounds amazing until you start blowing holes in your base and a little bit of you dies inside. You also have traps such as electric fences to damage and slow down zombies and then it's up to you to build your base. One of the great things about 7 Days is how customizable it is. Changing simple things about how often a horde will come fight you, difficulty, loot, etc. On top of all that, there are some amazing overhaul mods out there that basically make 7 Days almost a different game, adding amazing new vehicles, weapons, and just changing the atmosphere of the game immensely. If you're looking for a game with a lot of replayability, then 7 Days easily fits into that category, not to mention you can often find it on special. Imperium Galactical Survival is another voxel based game, but this time it is, has a sci-fi feel with the emphasis on making spaceships or space cubes, if you're anything like me, with a lot of customization of the shape and look of your ship available. Of course, people have made the Enterprise and Millennium Falcon to name but a few of the very colorful creations. And you can import other people's designs if you're not interested in spending the time yourself on making it so pretty. You will be spending your time collecting resources so you can build that next ship project or adding something to your base. One of the fun things with Imperium is that you can find an item later in the game called an auto miner that will do all the mining for you funnily enough and depending on your game settings won't deplete the resource at all. There is a faction system set up within Imperium so that you can choose to go to war with everyone if you want, becoming a pirate, doing trade runs or anything else in between. This combined with how vast the universe is, so big in fact that you would never visit every single planet there is, let alone see every POI on a planet. All this allows for a lot of replayability and a good sandbox feel to it. There's a good tutorial within the game that has recently been updated, but if you want to just go about and do your own thing, which is highly encouraged, then you can of course do that. This is really a gigantic universe to live in and can be an immense amount of fun with a good group of friends to play with. Slowly starting off with inching towards your first base and then eventually constructing a staggering space-faring vessel to roam the universe. If you're running for Sons of the Forest and haven't played the first, then you have been missing out and should give it a go. There's a reason that the Forest has a 95% rating on Steam. It is such a good game. The Forest is really atmospheric, and if you're looking for a game that will give you a jump scares, then this will be it. If you're caught away from your base at night and only have your little lighter on you, well, then that isn't going to be throwing up much light to show all the cannibals who literally want to eat you alive. Speaking of the cannibals, who are your main enemy in this game, they are... The AI with them is a lot of fun, with them attacking and withdrawing, trying to flank you and all at frightening speeds. Or sometimes just watching you at a distance and not even attacking, but instead coming back with more later that night. As well as having a great story to the game, and this cannot be overstated, with the multiple endings to the game and all the little bits of lore scattered throughout the wonderfully hand-created world, there's also a lot of small things done that add up to give a great experience. From simple things such as spearing a fish to cook and eat, to building a tree house with a zip line that details are sure there. There are a lot of different structures that can be built and you can easily lose a chunk of your time on just making a base how you want. As well as this, there are traps to defend yourself and even a houseboat if you feel so inclined. Overall, the forest is worth experiencing before you play Sons of the Forest later this year. You are not likely to be disappointed. One of the first things you will notice about this procedurally generated world is the graphics, but don't let this put you off. The gameplay more than makes up for the art style and spades. From your first stormy night where you have built too close to the ocean and waves start rolling in to trekking through the swamp biome, Valheim has a beauty that is not immediately apparent. 
It doesn't stop with the surprise and beauty. People have spent hours upon hours playing around the built-in customization that is possible. You only have to look online to see this. The small details in Valheim is what got me hooked at the beginning. Feeling hungry? Well, check the beach after a storm and you might be lucky enough to find a washed up fish. A feature that's probably got a lot of us is not having a chimney for our fire and then smoking ourselves out. Yes, the smoke will collect in your house and kill you if you aren't careful. The general gameplay loop in its most basic form is to kill a boss and then gain access to the next tier of resources and items. But this is the most basic and there is a whole lot more to the game than this. You have boats to build and sail in, trolls to face down and just the sheer immersion of the world to breathe in. The combat in Valheim isn't tricky, but you do have blocking and dodging so there is a small degree of trickiness to it. While of course managing your stamina bar, which is almost as important as your health bar as most games. There is no magic in Valheim and not likely to be in any of the updates that are coming out. The modding community seems to be having a blast with Valheim, with the great variety already having been made. From quality of life type mods like the ability to bring metals through portals, to a crazy mod called Pokeheim, which seems to inject a bit of the Pokemon universe into Valheim. Valheim is still in early access like most of the games on this list, but this shouldn't stop you from giving this Viking themed game a chance, and like the others on this list, this game can really shine in co-op. I am crossing fingers that the Mistlands updates comes out soon for another delve into the game. Subsistence is a different to many other survival games out there, where there is usually a bit of a progression curve, with yourself usually gaining abilities or getting substantial gear and becoming stronger, which you can kind of do in subsistence, but also kind of not. Your enemy here is nature itself more or less, with wolves and bears being two of your main foes you will face, as well as the cold itself, which can also easily kill you if you are not prepared. You will want to conserve your ammunition for your weapons because every bullet can be precious, especially if you have the bandits in your world who are the main antagonists outside of wolves and bears. You can build your base anywhere in this non-procedurally generated world, in the lake if you want or on a hillside. Whatever you decide, you will want to have a mind as to how defensible it is because if you haven't paid much attention, then it could be a nightmare to defend when the bandits come knocking. This is a game where you train your eyes to pick out the important items in the landscape, usually being crates of items that spawn within the world that you will find and collect resources from. As well as looking carefully, you will want to listen for animal noises, because a low growl from a bear might be all the warning you get before it is in your face and there is a no amount of begging that is going to save you from that bear. Subsistence has been described as one of the hardest survival games out there, and with good reason. But because of that challenge, it also has a lot of reward when you succeed.